The wind is built to about 20 knots and uh, the conditions are slowly starting to get worse. It's a little bit bumpy already and we're slamming all over the place. But what you see right now is the calm before the storm. Um, it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. We're just hoping that we don't have too much of the journey uh, with it right on the nose like this uh, because there's nothing we can do apart from motor into it. You might say, well, why don't we just go offshore and uh, you know, turn to starboard and start sailing? Well, in many, many situations, that would be the right thing to do. But this situation, the wind and the conditions and the swell gets so much worse out there. Uh, so we really have to stay close to the beach, which adds a whole extra dimension of stress in terms of navigation. So we're just sitting here and uh, hoping the wind is going to come round at the moment. Patiently sitting, may I add. I'm focusing on looking forward so that I don't get seasick like the other day. And deep breaths, deep breaths. Here we go, the wind is on our nose. We're just passing Point Corinto, which is the notorious beginning of the Papagayo's winds proper. We still have 150 miles to go, so pretty much another 24 hours. And we're just praying that the wind is gonna turn more to the beam reach. That's right, what the first mate said. Actually, we've got 130 miles to go. We covered a few miles during his nap. Welcome to Nicaragua, highly recommend. Anybody fancy a rough passage and a bit of a shower, come here. Literally, we still have about 120 miles to go and it's gonna get worse. The swell is not terrible, I'm, I'm not feeling unwell. Tom is doing okay as well. It's a perfect sailing destination. Anybody would like to motor straight into the wind at 35 knots, come here. Couldn't wish for better. I feel like I'm on a horse riding experience. If we make it to Costa Rica in one piece and nothing else break, then we're definitely gonna celebrate with several cocktails. I can promise you that. Tonight's ocean buffet. Raisin bread from a packing. It's as good as it gets. I'm not going down below. This is when you should be feeling sorry for the captain, not the first mate. Look at what he's got for dinner. This is not what I signed up for. Wes, I really wanted this. <laughs> no, I mean the dinner, not the passage. I don't think either of us are gonna get any sleep tonight, not with what's going on. The other hazard that we've got to watch out for is fishing lines. They have a lot of pangas out here on the coast, we think even at night, uh, with long lines. These are like long lines with lots of hooks on them and lots of bait. And they have two flags either end to mark where they are. Uh, the flags are black, helpfully, so not too easy to see at night. Although we've just seen one with a dim flashing light, so... If they're all like that, first mate's gonna be on a hell of a watch tonight. It's 3 a.m. and things are calmer. Thank God for that. Uh, in fact, we are motor sailing. The only issue right now is all those pangas. We are dodging them like crazy. So we are looking at the radar to make sure that we are avoiding them with plenty of notice. 
We've got 80 miles to go, which is probably another 15 hours. Tom is sleeping now, so I'm going to take it all the way to sunrise. Unless something unexpected happens. What a nice group of friendly fishermen come to say hi and take photos. <laughs> I was a bit nervous, I just started my shift and here's a panga full of guys coming up. Don't know what they want, but I have to keep reminding myself wherever we've been, no matter what it looks like, everyone mostly is just so friendly and wants to come and uh, say hi and take photos of your boat. <laughs> it's really cool. They gave me a good wave. I got a photo back, so it's all good sails in uh, shelter up again I've zipped in the uh, the spray dodger and uh, just gonna sit here and motor into it for a bit let's just hope this isn't the whole day ahead of us these gusts are something else. We've been on the way now for about 28 hours and um, we haven't been eating very much because it was quite rough. But um, here's the benefit of not eating on the passage. There's no dishes to be done. So there's one positive. Literally, this is all we have used. Currently surviving on coffee and raisin bread and hard boiled eggs. I've lost count of how many eggs I've been given on this passage. I think the first mate keeps laying them. Quite nice snack food though. And we've got eggs, and we've got peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for breakfast. And a cup of coffee as well. It's not bad, can't complain really, given the circumstances. It's a bit rolly at the moment, so we don't really feel like having a proper meal. We're gonna save that till we get in, just in case we get a bit seasick in the swell. Breakfast at 30 knots. It's howling like crazy. We are pointing into it and motoring. Uh, the only point of sail we could do right now is to go into the ocean, which means the swell will be huge and all over the place. So uh, we're sticking with this for now. It's almost 15 hours of sailing like this. Gusting 28 to 35 knots continuously. And if it's not on the nose, it's just off the front. So it's quite um, challenging and exhausting sailing. I can't cook anything. We haven't been eating very much. And uh, we need to concentrate really hard because the shore is right here. We are only about half a mile from the beach to reduce the swell. Only 22 miles to go and we are in Costa Rica. I cannot wait. I'm just thinking about a glass of red wine and bed. I've told him about drinking red wine in bed, but will he listen? Yeah, all in all, not a bad sail compared to what we were expecting. And we were expecting horrors. We're talking sailing disaster movie kind of horrors. Um, so when you set your expectations that low, then uh, anything's pretty good, really. I cannot for the life of me believe um, just that the wind has been on the nose and forward of the beam the whole way. If you look at the forecast, it should have been a beautiful 90 degrees beam reach. That is not at all what we've got. It's just started to come round a little bit in the last 20 miles. 
um, but only when it gusts to 30 plus. So it's really difficult to sail to. Do you set your sails for the, uh, the gusts or do you set your sails for the lulls in between and go nowhere? Uh, we, we chose the gusts so we are at least comfortable when the 35 knots hits us on the beam, but it doesn't make for the quickest of progress. Anyway, enough negativity, we're nearly in Costa Rica. Negative Nelly here, negative <laughs> Nelly. I'm very excited to get there. I might join the first mate for a glass of wine in bed as well. <laughs> the dog bed. They are washable. <laughs> I was all excited when the first mate got up to make lunch. 30 seconds later, this is what he makes. I'm seriously thinking I need an upgrade. You get what you deserve. This is what I deserve. What is it? An Easter nest? Perfectly roasted. Well, what can I say? I'm a man of many talents. Roasting nuts, hard boiling eggs, all sorts. Yeah, he laid that himself earlier. I just need to tighten the main sheet, the main sail uh, lock. Nearly there, 20 minutes to go and we are in the anchorage. Although in the guidebook it says that this particular anchorage can have gusts up to 40 knots <laughs> and the holding is mud. So a lot of boat drags as well. Yeah! It's all positive news today, isn't it? You wouldn't want it to be too easy, would you? It'd be no fun if it was easy, this sailing luck. We made it! Well, it may not look like much now, but it can gust 40 knots in here, so we're not quite out of the danger zone yet. But we have officially made it to Costa Rica. This is just amazing. I can't believe that the passage is over and done with. Uh, it was probably one of our most challenging passages ever. I think actually it was the most challenging passage ever. There was so much going on the whole time, no chance to rest the whole 35 hours. Um, and to top it all off, these screaming, unpredictable winds uh, coming from all different directions apart from behind us uh, made it extremely challenging. It was just crazy, full-on craziness for 35 hours. We had the winds, we had pangas, we had fishing activities, uh, we had the boat and we had the shore to dodge uh, all in one go. So just no chance to relax whatsoever. Until now that is. And I hear there's about to be some red wine and, and dog bed or something. Bring it on. Look at that. We're in Costa Rica. I can't believe it. Costa Rica, Rica, Costa Rica. He did learn the national anthem after all. I wonder what he was working on earlier. <laughs> Costa Rica, 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 Rica. We're in Bahia, Santa Elena right now. And uh, it's just beautiful. Very different scenery from what we're used to. It's more lush, green and tropical already and I have a feeling that is only going to continue as we work our way south. The gorgeous scenery surrounding us here is just teasing us to go ashore and explore. Uh, but we haven't checked into the country yet. We're going to do that around the corner when we get to the marina. So here we are in our new home of three months. Time to get this beauty up there and get comfortable. All this excitement about getting to Costa Rica. We are not officially checked in yet. <laughs> we need to be heading to Marina Papagayos, which is about 40 miles south. And there we will check in officially with an agent. Um, so since we are not legally checked in, we are not really allowed to go ashore here. Um, and then tomorrow we set sail for the marina and for the official check-in. We've got all our paperwork in order. Let's hope it goes as slick and as smooth as the Honduras check-in did. I hear they're a little bit more fussy here. Yeah, we had to send all the documents in advance, boat registration, our passports, our vaccination cards, um, last five ports, 
international czar pay, all of that. A lot of paperwork and um, the agent is not cheap, but that's the only way how we can get into Costa Rica nowadays. Um, so super excited for tomorrow, um, getting to Marina Papagayos. Welcome to Bohemia's sail loft. Today, we're gonna to be repairing the head of our jib which blew apart in a dramatic fashion in the strong winds. Uh, what I'm going to do is two repairs to this. Uh, what happened was uh, this webbing, this high strength webbing, uh, it's over 10 years old now and uh, it just snapped right through. Uh, so the salt water and the sun must have uh, done its work on it and uh, that snapped. Then the other thing that happened after this snapped was the tension all went into this uh, luff tape and the bolt rope and it ripped it down here so this is going to be the harder of the two repairs we've got new webbing so I'm just going to stitch cut this off and stitch a new one over the top uh, this I'm going to have to stretch some some sail tape around it and try my best to uh, to stitch it up tightly so it'll still fit in the track that it's got to slide through uh, so we got two damaged sails this is the only damage on the jib otherwise it's pretty good uh, so hopefully this can be repaired easily and the other damage we've got is the sun cover ripped off our Genoa uh, which is still on the furler, still flying right now so that one's gonna have to wait for the marina but we've done that job before it's probably why it rips so easily <laughs> so it should at least be an easy repair uh, to put it right when we get to the marina so you want to go through the Papagaya winds with your boat make sure your sails are up to the job because ours weren't <laughs> and while the cursed princess is sewing I'm baking cake yeah. gonna be a lovely custard peach crumble deliciousness. I just made it up. I'm not normally excited about things coming down but with this one I am. You know, as I say, alcohol is the answer. Special thanks in this episode go to our latest patrons for putting the peach in the first mate's peach tart. Thank you to Travis and his partner from Texas who are discovering their love for the sea gypsy lifestyle. Thank you so much and here's to you both. Champagne for everyone. <laughs> if you enjoyed this episode, then please don't forget to tell YouTube all about it by commenting, liking and sharing. See you next time. <laughs>